Good afternoon, uh, everybody. Welcome by uh, Mindful Elevation uh, Caribbean, where we're going to have another uh, discussion. So as we know, this month is uh, the month of the domestic uh, violence. So I found it very appropriate to try to have a conversation in uh, that area. So tonight we have our special guest where we're going to be talking about toxic relationship and the toxic uh, people map. So for that, we have our uh, guest, uh, Miss Amanda, where, of course, we're going to get to know her a little bit, what type of uh, work she um, does do, and what is the reason that she decided to share information about toxic relationship and what all we can do and get some tips uh, how we can uh, recognize when the relationship might go in the toxic uh, area. So uh, welcome. If you have, of course, if you have any questions, feel free to um, send that to us or any remark. We will always uh, go uh, through them. And a nice tip that I got from Amanda, I would like to also know where you are um, watching the show from. So if you can uh, write in the chat where you're watching the show from, that would be uh, very nice. So Amanda, good evening. How are you doing? I am great, and I'm excited for the next uh, 30 minutes or so to spend with you. Thank you. Thank you for accepting the invitation. And no, it's not uh, always an easy topic to be talking about, so I really appreciate that you're willing to share information uh, with the audience. Absolutely. That's why I'm, uh, I've been there, and that's why I'm coaching others in this area. Yeah. So let me start with the first question that I always ask. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, I am in Toronto, Ontario, Canada, just to sort of, I didn't put it in the chat. So I thought I'd, so I'm coming from the other side of the world country. I don't know. I've never been to San Martin before, but uh, mm -hmm. seen photos and it's beautiful. Oh, yes. Um, I was in, I'm 55 years old. Um, never married, no kids. Um, I'm in a super duper relationship now, which just goes to show how much of a difference it can make in your life when you sort of learn a lot of things about, for example, toxicity. Um, I was in real estate development for almost 30 years and a project I was working on was coming to an end a few years ago. And I had the choice to continue down in the same direction or take a left instead of the usual right. And the universe started to drop a bunch of breadcrumbs in front of me. Uh, the first of being was, was uh, moving locations just in the city. Um, and the second was I started working with a coach on a business idea I had. Mm -hmm. And that led to doing probably the first six months wasn't about business. It was about... Um, more spiritual work, what my purpose was. Um, I didn't realize I had a purpose. I, um, in the discussion we were having, I almost just threw up my hands and went, this is ridiculous. I'm like, I just want people to be happy. I want to be happy. And then it clicked. And one thing led to another. And when I started working uh, in another coaching program and got certified um, in Evolved ENLP, which is um, a lot of work with the unconscious mind. Um, I ended up honing into this, the word toxic. Um, and I didn't realize that I kind of came full circle and through doing a lot of work on my, uh, on about myself and my life to this point, I realized there was a common theme. And um, I had a narcissistic mother, which I didn't realize growing up. Um, unfortunately, um, a, what's this? Um, I can't remember the word I was going to use. Anyway, um, I'll just move on from that. Um, there was a lot of toxicity in the family, but it was very covert. So there was a lot going on in the background that I did not understand until I estranged myself and started doing more work on myself 
and just moving away from the relationship. Um, I then discovered that each consecutive job I had, there was toxicity in the workplace, um, mostly with the, the males, um, sometimes with the females. And then in some instances with some friendships I've had. So, but I didn't put all of that together till after. And then um, I realized if I had some of the tools I have now and that I share with my clients, mm -hmm. I wouldn't have necessarily made the same mistakes. Um, you can't change other people. That was one of the biggest lessons I've learned. Mm -hmm. um, and I think I fought 30 years trying to do that in the family mm -hmm. and work situation. Anyway, I'll stop there for a minute and let you <laughs> jump in. <laughs> Otherwise, you'll hear my whole life. You never know. There's always people listening that can uh, get a few things out of your um, personal life. So I never have any, i never opposed to that when people want to tell me their whole life. Mm -hmm. um, you were saying that at one point you were working on yourself spiritually and um, you started realizing certain things. Is that when you decided to distance yourself from your family or was that? No, I, I had distanced myself. Um, she stopped when it was getting good. I love that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, I... December 8th this year, I will have been estranged from my mother, father, and one sister for nine years. Okay. Um, I, there's a lot of people that disagree um, with mm -hmm. what I did. Um, I've never been at the point where, you know, I didn't think life was worth living or anything like that. But mm -hmm. I was tired of fighting. And I was tired of trying to prove that I wasn't who they thought I was or said I was or you know, I remember my father telling me I wasn't born with pro proper coping skills mm -hmm. um, and that I made everything about me. And I wasn't, I just wanted someone to listen to me. Mm -hmm. um, so I was the black sheep. I was the scapegoat. Um, I know some of those aren't politically correct terms these days, but I'm saying them anyway. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, you know, one of the premises in, is, is in my coaching, and this is not by any means to dissuade t traditional armchair therapy. But I spent the better part of 25 years going and talking to somebody for an hour a week. And, you know, when you're going to talk to a regular therapist, um, you are, I mean, I found it support. It got me through 25 years. I didn't, mm -hmm. I didn't learn any tools. I didn't learn about, you know, the personalities um, and personality disorder, so to speak, whether it's the narcissism. I, I prefer to use just toxic in general. Mm -hmm. um, had I known some of those things, then it may have made my journey a little easier. So yeah. well, mm -hmm. I like to say, you know, I work with strong women and a, f a few men um, who are struggling with toxic relationships and want to start living life on their terms and by their rules without hundreds of hours of therapy. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. you know, with the tools I have and whether it's the coaching I do, um, it's very task oriented. It's, um, you really, like, if you want to get, overcome some of these situations, you may not be able to walk away because that's not all was financially, you know, the case that someone can in my case i was financially able to you know separate myself i'd been living on my own for for years yeah. um in my work situation i had to stick it out for 16 years mm -hmm. and even it was probably only the last year that i w was even able to start applying some of the new knowledge i had yeah. um and you know, sometimes when you start to make changes in yourself without trying to change somebody else, there may be changes in the dynamic. 
Mm -hmm. So for example, you know, the less confrontational and hurt I was, somebody else is going to respond or react differently to me versus knowing that when they walk into the boardroom, mm -hmm. I'm like ready to, uh, yeah, it, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And you said at one point that um, if you would have the tools, it would have made the journey a little bit shorter or maybe easier. Um, and yes, I agree with you, especially because we're seeing that when you're teaching people tools and skills, it makes them better adapt to deal with whatever coming on their path. I have to say that you said at one point that um, you decided to distance yourself from your family. That was before you even started working on yourself and, and learning all those tools that at that time, you were actually very strong already to realize that I need to take some distance from people that are hurt to me, even though you might not have known how to um, handle or how to process what mm -hmm. what all has been going on. And sometimes that's that's a first step that we need. Even if you might not know how or what next, how next day will come that you realize or or that you know for yourself that you can be strong enough to step away from something that hurting you, even though you don't know exactly how it hurting you or what will be the consequences or anything that, uh, yes, we, yeah. Realizing that we're stronger than we think. <laughs> and, and I, I, you know, I say this with all honesty, I really have had to do all this work on myself without any support. So, um, you know, I mean, the support I looked for at times was, you know, repeatedly talking to friends or coworkers over and over and over. And now when I see people in the situation I'm in doing that, I'm like, oh, I must have just been so exhausting <laughs> for some yeah. mm -hmm. Um You know, one of the things I, I always like to start with is um, setting healthy boundaries. Now, I didn't know anything about setting boundaries. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if I were to go back now, um, and like I said, I wasn't dealing with, I know you mentioned it was Domestic Violence Awareness Month. You know, I wasn't dealing with physical abuse, but there was mental, there was emotional in both the work environment and the mm -hmm. home. Yeah. Um, Sometimes I feel guilty saying that, you know, and even like publicly, but then there's some stories I can tell and, you know, I'll have one of my coaches be like, that happened. You didn't imagine it. Yeah. So, you know, back to the boundaries, probably when I was, you know, I'm going to say, say even in my twenties or thirties, if I'd said to my parents, this is the way it is. And this is how I feel and this is what I need. Who knows? Maybe things would have been different. Mm -hmm. um, I think in everybody's family dynamic or relationship, you know, certainly if you're being threatened with physical abuse, it's, it's, it's not the place where you start. Yeah. You, need, you need support and guidance, you know, working with somebody, whoever it is, whether it's a therapist, a coach, but, you know, mm -hmm. to back you up. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I can imagine that when you are born, for example, in your case, um, in a family where you have a narcissistic mother, that it's not easy because that is what you have known and kind of like learned, let me say, your whole life. So then it's not easy to always say, oh, yes, this is it. Or I let me step out of it, especially if you when you're younger. The older you get, the more you see from the world and you started to, like you said, recognizing certain things. And then it might make it a little bit easier to stand up. But I can imagine that when you a young, maybe even teenager or younger, that it's not easy to stand up against your, your parents because at the end, they are the, your parents. That's what you know. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. you know, society... 
um, frowned upon something I thought, but I had uh, I, I wrote an article for a ma for a magazine that I write for, and it was called instead of family, it was called Framily, F R A M I L Y, and you know, blood is not always thicker than water. I know that's a bit of a cliche thing to say. Um, what I did was for my self-preservation and survival. Um, I don't think that necessarily you were planning on going down this estrangement road, but, you know, it's part of my coaching now is based on lived my lived experience. And that is, you know, very unhealthy work environment. Um, I was attracting they weren't bad people as friends, but just the wrong people and draining. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I see, you know, a few years later and it takes, you know, it takes time, but how my life has changed. And, mm -hmm. you know, the universe brought me to coaching for a reason. And, you know, there's a reason I had to go through some of those experiences and I've never been a particularly spiritual person. So I'm still very, the universe yeah mm -hmm. somebody specific um and i can't help but think there's a reason i i didn't make a decision one day just to do this yeah so mm -hmm. you know i'd like to i'm very um i'm very casual mm -hmm. um i'm very open i certainly you know don't want to make any of this about me it's more if I can help people not have to struggle um, and go through some of the things I went through. And, you know, even if that's understanding their boss's behavior and, you know, I know in my situation and the way I handled things was sort of direct confrontation, you know, when I yeah. knew somebody was lying or, you know, giving me the silent treatment and I was really fueling, that person's illness, for lack of a better mm -hmm. word. Um, and I didn't know at the time that by not engaging and taking steps back and um, not challenging things, that although it can sometimes still have a difficult, like it's not, it's not easy being on the receiving end when you change your behavior with those sorts of people, because they mm -hmm. know it and they don't like it. So mm -hmm. there's a period of yeah. adjustment um, where there, you know, there could be threats, there could be, again, the silent treatment. Um, mm -hmm. and I think those are, I know I'm jumping all over the place, but those are things I didn't, I knew nothing about. Yeah. So I was, you know, I was getting up, I, I talk about it on my website, um, and in my bio and stuff, I was getting up every morning ready to do battle with, with these toxic people. Mm -hmm. um, they, you know, I know there's theories that I, you know, attracted them. Mm -hmm. um, I don't necessarily agree with that. You know, in a family situation, you're not attracting a sibling that's yeah. that way. Um, when you go into a work environment, you know, the other people, the clients and consultants coming in, you're not by choice attracting them. Mm -hmm. However, you know, if one of them is, I'm going to use the word activating instead of triggering because triggering gets used a lot. Um, and then you respond to that person or sorry, you react to them. Mm -hmm. That sort of brings out the toxicity that may not have been there had you not, you know, called them out. Um, yeah. I have a, I think you, you mentioned I could say I, I do have a, an ebook. Mm -hmm. um, four secrets um, strong greedy w women need to know to rise above toxic relationships without hundreds of hours of therapy. And in it, I share um, things like setting boundaries, saying no, using the word I, and I also go through four scenarios where it's a before and then an after when you're using some of these tools. Mm -hmm. um, and when I was writing it, I didn't intend it to be almost verbatim stories where, you know, the names have been changed to protect the innocent, so to speak. Uh -huh. But um, I think one of my favorite ones 
is about a boardroom meeting. And I start saying something about, you know, I walk into the boardroom and I take my normal seat. I've sort of got the agenda. I'm ready to go. And Bob, sorry, everyone has checked their egos at the door except for this one person. And this person and I are always like this. Mm -hmm. so I call him out because he's behaving <coughs> inappropriately and it's not his meeting and he's grandstanding. Nobody backs me up. You know, I'm told really after, like, why didn't you just let him? You know the way he is, just let him be. But mm -hmm. I couldn't let go of that. And then the after, um, I walk into the boardroom. I don't take my normal seat. I do away with the agenda. And I turn to this person that I've always struggled with. And I'm like, Bob, floor is yours. How would you like to start today? Uh, is there anything you'd like to, you know, start the meeting off with? Mm -hmm. Absolute silence. And you could hear a pin drop in the boardroom. There are wood floors in there, by the way. Anyway, mm -hmm. that's, that's the sort of, and all that was me changing my behavior. And there's a ripple down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that, that's in a perfect world scenario, of course. Um, and that's something that, um, you know, has to be practiced over and over. Um, I still catch myself sometimes with certain people wanting to just, mm -hmm. because um, I have always believed that there's a certain way things should be done and people should behave. And I've been criticized for that also. Mm -hmm. um, but there's certain values that I will not let go of. And I mean, even if it's th simple things like pleases and thank yous and treating each other with, you know, respect. Mm -hmm. uh, we all deserve to be loved. We all deserve to be heard. Um, I know that's one thing that I now realize I wasn't getting. So mm -hmm. I think I was, you know, yelling louder. Um, and yeah, there I went on another. <laughs> So much for your questions. <laughs> I know. Okay, so we have a comment here. I admire the manner in which your guest was able to draw upon her inner resources to safeguard her mental health and well-being. That takes a lot of strength and courage. Yeah, indeed. Thank would you? you yes. Would you say that? Um, and I think you mentioned it by you saying that you attracted that due to the fact that you were living with a narcissistic mother, that um, it took you longer to recognize toxic people in your work environment and that you kept it up longer than maybe if you would have be living with a non-toxic or narcissistic mother then. Yeah, my, I think my... I was, as a result of constantly trying to prove myself, and I, I was the different one in the family. You know, I like to wear the funky skirts or, you know, not nothing revealing or anything, but I didn't realize that if I took attention away from her, it, I was criticized in some way. Um, yeah. You know, bicycle shorts, which used to be all the rage back in the 80s, and I wore those with something funky on, and how on earth can you go out wearing those and blah, 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 blah. And I would just go ahead and do it anyway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah. I, and like I said, I didn't, I didn't know there was anything going on, you know, until I got much older and the more we became, you know, th all three of us, I have two other sisters independent, the more, and I mean that, you know, that's, and I'm, I'm, that goes down another whole rabbit hole about, you know, common traits, whether mm -hmm. it's mother, father, sister, boss. Um, you know, I was, I can't use the word damaged because I wasn't damaged and I wasn't broken, but I was hurt. Um, and I didn't realize, um, you know, like I, I mentioned earlier that we do, I do a lot of work with the unconscious mind. And 
without getting into a lot of detail on that, your unconscious is your 90% from your neck down and mm -hmm. your conscious is 10%. And we walk around every day sort of ruled by that 10%. Your 90% ha has a memory of every situation you've ever been, every word that's ever been said to you, anything that's ever been done to you, what you've said, what you've done. And it forms the vision on how you see the rest of the world. So when I look back now, what happened as a result, you know, while I was growing up and, you know, I was unhappy at the school I was at and I came home every night and cried for three hours because I was unhappy. But the solution was find out why she's unhappy. I'm like, I'm telling you why I'm unhappy. But event after event after event, you know, made the me see things differently than other people. I mean, we all have different filters. We're all going to see the exact same situation differently mm -hmm. because we've had different experiences. Yeah. Um, and I now have to, or have had to unlearn a lot of those, you know, you're not smart enough. We had to protect you. You weren't born with proper coping skills. Um, you won't make it without us. And I was fighting all that stuff. So yeah. I'm learning all that. So like I said, as much as you ask certain things about the toxic relationships, it's really sometimes you can move and change the situation. And sometimes it's about changing yourself and making adjustments to your own behavior. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And what was the mentally and emotionally the consequences of all of that um an eating disorder when i was 21 or 20 it started and that lasted for 10 years okay so that was uh a big chunk i would say that was although i never knew why it started mm -hmm. that was i guess the only way i had control over anything because nobody would listen yeah mm -hmm. um and you know i don't remember being depressed but i think you know you just keep up appearances and i think emotionally um and mentally it just it i was unapproachable i was intimidating i was gritty in a bad way um and I don't necessarily think I was that, but that's how other people saw me. Now I get people telling me I'm cute and I'm actually the approachable one in the room. I was at a function the other night and this woman came up to me, her and I are like night and day. And she's like, well, you know, we shouldn't do it. But when we walk into a room, we kind of, you know, scan and make a judgment here and there. And, and she said, um, cause one of the things I pride myself on is being authentic it comes with consequences, but I'd still rather be yeah. authentic mm -hmm. than what you see is, and you can tell I, there's no filter on me, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, so, you know, that's where I am today. Um, and it did mean, I mean, some people left me um, mm -hmm. in the sense of, you know, I had a, best friend for 30 some odd years and it was pretty dysfunctional at times and I think very one-sided um and I stood up for myself one day for the first time and that was the end of it yeah and mm -hmm. you know it took a little it took adjusting and it took there was ego and pride there because although I wasn't in the wrong in the situation that happened Mm -hmm. um, they still were the one that went, you know, see yes. it, the lead on Facebook. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but at, in the end of the day, I know it was the right thing because my energy was being drained. Yeah, correct. And even though it might take indeed a little while for to adjust and, and everything because, um, if she was a friend of 30 something year, 
she might have been a constant in your life and then to adjust of not having her and on top too kind of like thinking that okay i stood up for myself and then now i'm getting the bye bye and not talking to you while i might have been correct for doing that yeah it's it's uh, you have to learn how to grapple with that as well yeah mm -hmm. it's i mean i had a lot of criticism for wanting to create my own you know perfect little world with no ripples and um like i said i think it is so important to be happy and to be supported and to be heard mm -hmm. you know by your friends by your family um, employers should be that way with their employees mm -hmm. um, supportive listening to them patting them on the back just because they get paid to do a job doesn't mean they don't need yeah. encouragement and and thank mm -hmm. you yeah um, and genuine ones not um, that you give it just because you know that that is the next step that you have to do a hundred percent and that you know that's that's a whole other area where you know more conscious leadership is important in organizations mm -hmm. um i wouldn't even dare <laughs> touch that one with a 10 foot pole at this point in time but um you know i mean i hope that this has taken you know a helpful direction i know on the podcast they're not normally you know they don't have to be linear yeah, mm -hmm. um, yeah. And um, another question that I had um, for, um, out of based on what you tell um, telling us, I can assume how you reach from you working as a coach to help other people that are toxic. But can you still kind of like explain how you reach to, okay, let me go and help other people that might have been in the same situation as me because you could have chose to go do something different. I like to say I lost almost 30 years of my, the, what could have been the best years of my life. Mm -hmm. um, struggling in very dysfunctional situations and fighting. And it wasn't until I was able to, be on the other side and look back i was like like i don't want anybody to lose that chunk of time going through all the dysfunction like yeah. that's not why we're here and mm -hmm. i mean fair is a wrong word because i know life isn't fair but if there's a way i can help you know 10 people 100 people in the next 20 years avoid losing that chunk avoid you know i walked around every day wondering what people thought of me um yeah. worrying about people liking me because mm -hmm. although i was challenging things and fighting i mean i i did very well in business i mean i am you brought it up i i will give myself that i am strong mm -hmm. you know i've yeah. i've there's people that have gone through worse but we're not supposed to compare ourselves to others mm -hmm. but um, you know, I didn't marry, I didn't have kids. I didn't have the white picket fence. I don't have grandchildren. Um, I didn't travel because I was, you know, whether I like to admit it or not, you know, mentally struggling with some of this stuff. And I, I didn't realize. So, yeah. you know, part of my goal is it is, it's to, you know, in a six month or a year period of time, get someone from where I was to where I am versus it taking. Yeah. 30 taking years, 30 years. Um, yeah. And I said, like, I'm, I think, you know, therapy at the time was what I needed. So that's why I say, um, I, I don't disagree with it by any means. And then I went to reading books and then I ended up getting into, you know, hiring a coach, which brought things to, to where I am today. Mm -hmm. um, and I believe in everything I'm doing. And I, you know, wish I had a chance to do certain things differently. Mm -hmm. And if I get to, you know, if, if any indication is the person I, you know, have in my life now, um, that things are on the right track and that's how they should be. And this is my time, then, mm -hmm. you know, what I'm talking about and 
how I'm going to be supporting people and do support my clients, you know, works. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I said, the coaching is very, it's goal oriented. It's task related. It's, you know, committing 200% to doing things that make you very uncomfortable. I've had to do it myself and don't like it. I mean, I still, we still do, you know, coaching exchanges with others and training. So we're always works in, in progress and, mm -hmm. and you know, yeah. I can be in live training and just have aha moments all of a sudden about something that happened in life and why. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah. to be able to pass those on to someone without them having to go through all of it. Is yeah. Mm -hmm. part, of my, part of my purpose. Yeah. So you do see, you do notice a difference with your client that, um, it is worth it to learn the different tools and skills to um, help them to realize that aha moment or to realize in what type of relationship they Absolutely. are. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And I mean, like I said, there's some basic work where it's just using a different language and behavior and learning to, you know, respond, not react to things. But when you start, you know, when someone has a, problem that they're struggling with repeatedly we and i shouldn't use coach speech but we like to call it the presenting problem well that's mm -hmm. not really what the problem is once you start peeling back all the layers of the onion you get to what the problem really yeah. is and it mm -hmm. may be um i'm not good enough or no one listens to me yeah but mm -hmm. it appears as toxic but it's actually something else Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's how yeah. it manifests itself. Correct. So part of it is getting to the the root, the, and mm -hmm. and then you figure out why that belief is there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and you know, limiting beliefs, limiting decisions. We talked about, you know, or I mentioned, I'm not good enough. I'm not smart enough. Um, yeah. nobody likes me. That's one I, you know, once mm -hmm. in a while, still have to get rid of again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and for yourself, is that a, a continuous work that you um, once in a while, maybe you see yourself that you want to go think back in that manner that you have to remind yourself, no, I'm good enough. I'm strong enough. Uh, I, I think human nature, we sometimes, you know, like I said, something will trigger you or activate you or, you know, I've got a a neighbor that is a miserable person mm -hmm. and it just sometimes like I've gotten to the point where it's like okay you know what it's bugging you it's because you're worried about what he thinks or that he doesn't like you and I'm like what Amanda why does that matter it mm -hmm. doesn't matter he's got his own story you're never gonna know it just let go so I'm now able to I have the awareness so that I can I don't want to say stop myself in my tracks, but when my mind starts going down that road, I can bring myself back around again really quickly. So mm -hmm. I don't go, you know, spinning out. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's, that's another very interesting part of, you know, the, the coaching world, so to speak, is mm -hmm. that awareness. Um, and, and some of that are the aha moments and some of them are funny and some of them are like, can't believe that just happened and you know i now know understand why certain women in a work environment were making me see red mm. um and it's because they were representative of something from my childhood but i didn't realize all of that yeah so if i were to run into those women knowing what i know now there's i will admit there's still a part of me <laughs> that <laughs> sees red but then i can switch faster yeah yeah mm -hmm. and that's and that just it, that's an evolution like yeah. i said we're all works in progress um mm -hmm. not everybody out there has any interest in looking at themselves or their behavior or doing any work they just mm -hmm. this is the way i am and i'm right and um and if that's the type of person someone is, yeah, they're not getting my energy and and, mm -hmm. and 
my time. Yeah. yeah. So, mm-hmm. For the clients that come to you, how to put it? Does it take a long time for them to realize that, for example, they have to set boundaries or they might have to do something different when it comes to their behavior or because they already chose to go by you, they kind of like already realizing, okay, this is going on. So now is the tools I need to learn how to. They're, they're ready for a solution. They've had enough. And I mean, that's, that's the point I basically got to. I'm like, except my next step wasn't necessarily a coach. Mine was walk out of therapy and tell him goodbye. I don't need you anymore. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, But it's, uh, no, they're looking, they are ready for a solution. They don't know what the solution is. Um, They still think the problem is what I talked about. The one that we think is the problem. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, they're ready to make, they've, they've decided it's time for a change. And I don't think necessarily, I mean, someone may need to work with a therapist on one thing, but work, you know, with a coach on something else. Yeah. Um, Mm -hmm. But they definitely, it's not, you have to want the change. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. And it's the same as, you know, I'm trained in hypnosis too, but it's, um, it's the same as finally deciding you want to quit smoking or leave a relationship or find a new job or switch careers or, um, you know, stop the pattern of behavior that, you know, is unhealthy. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. So Mm -hmm. yeah, they're, they are ready. It's not, um, you know, I'd like to find the people out there to help because I know there are people out there that, that want it. If I, if I've gone and invested in myself and, and this isn't me selling, it's just the time and, and energy and commitment it takes to really bear your soul and your story and, and, and understand it. It's exhausting, but at the end of the day, it is so worth it. Mm -hmm. So, so worth it. Yeah. Can I ask the question, what can a person do to prevent to be in a toxic relationship? Um, Is that a valid question? I mentioned a few things. I'm just going to flip to my little... uh, Mm -hmm. um, Some of it is just recognizing red flags. And I go through some of them in in my ebook I mentioned. Mm -hmm. Um, Constantly fighting with a parent, feeling physically drained after being with friends, you can't be yourself around people. Um, you're defensive on guard. So it's not necessarily, um, part of it is their behavior and part of it is how you're feeling. Um, if somebody is accusational, if obviously physical, mental abuse, um, silent treatment, you know, unpredictability in terms of their behaviors and and moods, um, lies, threats, mm-hmm. um, passive aggressiveness, mm-hmm. um, silent treatment. Um, I know one thing I probably should have paid more attention to, and I, I waited for breadcrumbs, was not wanting to be the one to reach out, whether it was with girlfriends, guy friends. So I kind of let them master the schedule so i was always sort of sitting by the wayside Mm, Um, so you know in a relationship if things aren't equal um and that be friend or romantic um family is a much difficult more difficult one because no you cannot just up and leave Mm -hmm. i was 46 when i did and it wasn't up and leaving i'd been living my own life for for years um Mm. and in the work situation Um, you know, there's, I remember one of my first jobs and I had a very verbally and mentally abusive boss, but I was also told that if I made any waves, that would follow me for the rest Mm -hmm. of my life. Okay. Um, so it's, you know, how do you navigate around those things? Mm -hmm. Um, I think in my instance, and I would like to think that's one thing that 
you know, helps other people is when somebody does listen and says, you're not wrong. There is an issue here. Um, so I think, you know, someone having that support and just saying it isn't you, they may be telling you it's you, but it's actually their bag. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know what that they're carrying around Correct. and it's being projected onto you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah. it's, uh, it's complicated. Yes, it is. It is. You mentioned at the beginning about your ebook. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about it? Where can we find it? You can go to my website, which is amandakirkland.com. And mm -hmm. there's just a registration page. Pop your email address in and um, I will send it out to you right away. Okay. Um, I also... One other thing um, I didn't mention to you, but and there is a pop up on my website, but I do offer a, a free 30 minute, I call it a grit strategy mm -hmm. session, um, where we sort of hop on the phone and dig a little deeper about, um, you know, the t toxic relationship you may be struggling with right now mm -hmm. and offer some tips that might help you because it's not a one solution fix all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, there may be some things that work for some and not for others. Yes, exactly. And so I have that on there. Um, and if someone chooses that they want to do something further, that's great. There's a few options. And if it's mm -hmm. just, you know, a 30 minute call to connect and I can share a bit and help somebody, then, you know, I'm, I'm very happy to do that. Mm -hmm. um, I do all my stuff on, I, I mean, I can do in person in home, but obviously um, Zoom. Mm -hmm. I can okay. up, so I'm happy, happy to do that and offer both. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. That sounds, uh, that sounds good. I, so we still put the website uh, in the chat for whoever um, wants to go to it. They can uh, go to the website to get more information also about you and um, mm -hmm. all the work that you're doing. So before we uh, go, is there any tip, suggestion um, that you would want to share with us? Um, I will, the what I'm, when having a discussion with somebody uh, in a situation where you're unhappy, try replace the word you with I. Um, because when you say to somebody, you make me feel, or you did this, or you did that, you're going to have them on the defensive right away. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like I'm not being listened to. Uh, I'm not going to allow myself to be in the situation anymore instead of the you again, you did yeah. this, you did yeah. that. Um, so there's, there's a bit of the, I um, is one of the tips I, I have in the book um, mm -hmm. too. So. Yeah. And that's uh, very important because then you keep it to you, how you feeling instead of trying to, yeah, put it on somebody else. I mean, it, it is. I mean, that's the, the projecting onto somebody else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's uh, just the word I. Yes, indeed. Indeed. <laughs> we, we are important. Our feelings are important. Mm -hmm. um, yes. We deserve to be treated with respect and, and we need to treat others likewise. Yeah, correct. Correct. That's very important. Well, Amanda, thank you very much uh, for your time for um, sharing uh, a, a little piece of your um, story and also sharing with us what all uh, you're doing now when it comes to helping uh, other people. So I really want to thank you about that. Viewers, if you still have questions when you're watching the replay after, you can always ask it. We always uh, will send the questions in this case to Amanda so she can answer them. So feel free to uh, do so. And still let us know where you're watching it, even if you're watching the replay. So that's nice uh, uh, to know. Amanda, thank you again. And thank, thank you, you so for much. all the 
you're welcome and thank you for all the work uh, that you're doing and helping others for them not like you said not to have to to go through that whole um leap of years but trying to yeah come quicker to what they need to to their to their they yeah. yes absolutely correct. correct thank you very much you're welcome as a guest you're welcome. Thank you. So everybody enjoy the rest uh, of your evening and uh, I will see you next time again. Bye everybody. Bye-bye.